This is Jack Jackson. We're going to continue on with our look into descriptive statistics measures of size. The last one we looked at, last video we looked at frequency, relative frequency, and cumulative frequency, cumulative relative frequency. And now we're going to look at some visual ways of looking at that. So before we had sort of tables of numbers, now we're going to look at some graphical uh, methods. And so we're going to look at some bar graphs and histograms. You're probably already familiar with these, but bar graphs use either vertical, which is usually preferred, or could use horizontal bars to display the relationship between two quantities. Typically, one variable is the variable of interest, and the other is a frequency, like a count, or possibly a relative frequency. Uh, they should be, uh, they can be easily read, and they can be rep reproduced. Uh, f you can make one from a table, but you should also be able to reproduce the table from the graph if you've got a good scale. They're extremely common. Some things that you should include, a title, axis labels with units, unless they're just simple counts or percentages. Um, you should, you should uh, indicate what your source is. And the bars must always start at zero and have the same width. These last two things are extremely important, and especially the one starting at zero, I often see this violated. If you're not going to start your bar at zero, you should not be using a bar graph. So that if you start your bars at zero and they have the same width, then both the areas and the heights are proportional to the frequency, and of course also proportional to relative frequency. One of the questions that comes up right away is, should the bars touch each other? Well, it kind of depends on what it is that you're measuring. If your data is nominal or categorical data, the bars shouldn't touch. Remember, the order is irrelevant in that case. You can put them in any order. And oftentimes, we'll even use different color bars just to make it more interesting. If the data is ordinal or, or above that, then there's going to be an inherent order. So the bars should be put in either increasing or decreasing order. Usually we use increasing order. And in that case, both the horizontal and vertical scales are used. And usually we'll use the same color bars. With discrete data, usually we do not let the bars touch. So there's a little space between each bar. But if the data is continuous, then the bars should touch even if the data has been rounded off if in theory it is a continuous uh, date type of data we will let the bars touch now some optional elements that you could have on the bar graphs is you could have quantitative data labels on each bar in other words a number that gives the height of the bar uh, either on the bar or just above it we can oftentimes have grid lines uh, horizontal if we use a vertical bar graph horizontal grid lines are often present. Not usually uh, so much uh, with vertical grid lines, but horizontal ones are pretty common. Now, if you want to make them more appealing uh, or cute or whatever, visually appealing, you can make use of color, patterns, or graphics in the bars and or in the background to enhance the visual appeal. Some things you should definitely avoid. Avoid three-dimensional graphs. They are misleading and difficult to read. If you think they look cool, find some other way to make it look cool. Also avoid any breaks in the scale. So let's look at a few examples here. Here's one with nominal data. Notice the order is irrelevant, so the bars don't touch. And the bars vary by color. That's optional. But for example, that notice the title, Make of Automobile Driven by Students in a Particular Class. Class 1, uh, this particular one, they had Fords, Toyotas, uh, General Motors cars, and Hondas, let's say, for example, and we can see that. Now, it does have a horizontal, uh, the horizontal scale there is the make, it's labeled as make, and we have the four different types listed. On the vertical scale, we have frequency, and it says it's frequency right there, and that's just a count, so that's just a number. And we have some grid lines uh, going every five there, so we can see it a little bit better. So that's 10 and that's 15. So it looks like there's 12 Fords. Uh, looks like 18 Toyotas, 10 GM cars, and 5 Hondas. So notice we could reproduce the numbers in the table from the graph. It's very important that your graph is precise 
so that you could actually reproduce the table uh, from the graph itself. Here, the next one is an example of ordinal data. It's a Likert scale, increasing order of satisfaction. The bars don't touch this time because uh, it's they're discrete chunks. And notice it's, it goes from very satis dissatisfied, somewhat dissatisfied, neutral, somewhat satisfied, and very satisfied is the satisfaction level, say with service, it's whatever, something. And again, we have our frequency here, and we have our some horizontal lines. This one, which decided to draw a little box around this part here, which I think makes it a little bit uh, cleaner to look at. And this one also has uh, the optional uh, point of putting the data labels up here above the bars. So you can see visually this is 10, but it also says it's 10 right there. So it's essentially basically recopying part of the table right there, actually the whole table really, um, on top of the bars. It's probably appropriate to use the same color bars because they're all basically measuring the same thing, just different levels of satisfaction. Uh, the purple one up here, the purple bars, this is the number of defects per item in a particular sample. Okay. And it looks like this is a sample of... Uh, okay, I think I want something else. Let me make a slight change to this one. Okay, this is better. The The uh, lowest bar here was supposed to be at zero. So 50 of the items have no defects. The uh, 10 items have one defect. Three defects for... Uh, three items have two defects. None have three defects. Notice that there is a space there. So you can't go 0, 1, 2, 4. You need a spot for three since this is uh, ordinal data. It is discrete. You, there's no, it's not rounded off to one defect. Something can't really have 1.2 defects and you round it off to one. No, it either has one defect or two. They count, just count them. So these are discrete, so the bars aren't touching, but they are the same same color. So that's a, a ratio data, just counts. So uh, number of defects we're counting and then frequencies of course are also counts. So all of these we're looking at here are frequencies on the upper, on, on the uh, vertical scale. So that, the, the output variable is is ratio discrete, it's, it's a count. But in this case the input variable is also a count. Now here is, uh, let's say you've got a, a little league team named the Cardinals and these are the ages of players. There we have 10, 11, and 12 year olds on this team. And notice we have three 10 year olds, four 11 year olds, and five 12 year olds. Okay. So that we have this little baseball team with this many players. Um, Notice that ages are actually continuous data. Um, now we, you know, we, we say our age changes on our birthday, but in reality we get older every single day. So these ages are been rounded off. So in this case, the bars actually touch. Technically speaking, the 10 year 10 because of the round we, we always round ages down. You can be you can be 11.99 years old, but you don't say you're 12 until, you're, until you've actually made it to that to your birthday. So, um, technically speaking, the 11 should be right there and the 12 right there at the left end and the 10 right here at the left end of that bar. So, because that's what it is. It's 10 and anything 10 point something is rounding down to 10. But it's okay to also label them like this. So that was all, all those four graphs were made up data. But here's some real data. This is the religion of the um, U.S. presidents. So from that table that we were looking at in, a, in our previous uh, video, um, we have all the presidents through, through President Obama. And this is their religion. And this one is actually in decreasing order, uh, more or less. The Baptists and Southern Baptists right here together were put here kind of together because they're versions of Baptists. But then you can see that the bars are decreasing like this. 
This is what we would call, or at least it's, it's half, it's either, it's a, called a Pareto diagram or it's half of a Pareto diagram. We'll talk more about that later on. But here, this is um, uh, categorical data, nominal data, so that there's no inherent order. We just happen to order them with the bars decreasing in size. So we could easily see, for example, um, that there are more Episcopalian presidents than anything else. Presbyterians next, then Unitarian, uh, Unitarian and Baptist, if you put these together, and then uh, Disciples of Christ, Quaker and Reformed Dutch, a couple of those, and then one each of these, of these others out here. And so you can kind of see, um, see what the religions are. Okay, now we have, um, whoops, that's back, went backward. Yeah, oh no, here we go. This is the, this is some data that we had for grades earlier from our previous video. And I want to make an exercise out of this. What I'd like you to do is get you a piece of graph paper, a straight edge and a pencil, and very carefully construct a frequency histogram for the data above. Now a histogram is just a bar graph where the output is a frequency. Okay, so it's it's basically everything we've been looking at, they're all histograms. So uh, so go ahead and do this. Remember this is ordinal data, so you want to put the bars in that in the order. So uh, see if you can go ahead and do this now. Press pause. Well now hopefully you did this on your own and you've come back and your graph should look something like this. Notice that there is an inherent order to the to the data. Um, I went ahead and made the bars touch because in reality there's probably some point here where there's a cutoff and grades could go all the way up to that in some sort of points. Technically I guess they are really discrete categories so it would be okay if the bars uh, had small gap in between. But you would see this is this is what we see here. So now we can look at this and see some basic shape of the, of the distribution. We see a lot of C's, quite a few B's, not so many of the other grades. So it's kind of higher in the middle, comes kind of down on the ends. This is a typical kind of graph shape that we'll see a lot. We might call this a, uh, a mound shape where it's kind of mounded up in the middle and then kind of trails off on both sides. Um, okay, so now I'll take the same data and uh, you can see the actual numbers here again on this graph because I put the data labels as well as a uh, grid line for every number. So you should be able to read those easily without the data labels, but they're also there as well. And use this to make a relative frequency histogram for this data. Okay, go ahead and do that on your own. Press pause now. Well, here we are back again and we see that we have the frequency histogram well, it turns out that a relative frequency histogram looks basically the same. It's just got a different scale here. Here I have the percentages at least rounded off to a whole number. Letter grade here. We have a title there. And then we have some percentages here. So notice that if you wrote the, put those side by side, the graphs are exactly the same. But what we have is two different scales. Okay. So over here on the frequency histogram, the scale is the actual count, the actual number of items. On a relative frequency, we have the percentages. In fact, sometimes you'll see those put together on a single graph like this, and you'll have both scales. You'll have the frequency scale on one side and the relative frequency scale on the other side. Now, be a little careful here because, because the... Um, well, let's see what we got here. Because the total was total was 18, right? No. For this one, let's see. What is the total? 10. Yeah, 18. Um, it turns out that the grid lines here going up by 5% and the grid lines going up by 1 don't exactly match. Okay? So, for example, notice this 3 is right on a grid line here. And it's 17, uh, roughly 17%, which is above the grid line of 15%, but below the grid line for 
percent. So the grid lines are not matching up exactly. So if I go on to this one where I put them both, I can either put the grid lines for the percentages or the grid lines for the whole numbers, but I'm not going to want to put both because they're not going to line up exactly. Some of them do. I mean, 9 and 50% is perfect. Of course, 0 is 0% 0 no matter what. Another thing that you can do is, is put the, uh, maybe put the scale. We could go, another option would be to do this. Um, go back here and say, do this one just like I have it here with the actual counts, but then for the labels, label them with the relative frequencies. So put the percents there or, or do the opposite. Over here, do this and have the percentages read off of this. And then on the top, just put the actual counts. So you can do that a couple different ways. But notice that the basic graph is the same either way. So that gives you an idea of how to work with uh, histograms, which is just a bar graph where the output is frequency or perhaps a relative frequency. Gives us a nice visual way of seeing these important concepts.